Hi and welcome to Bits of Code. I'm Stephen Brown and today we're going to be talking about reinforcement learning. Reinforcement learning is a branch of machine learning. Uh, it's used primarily in gaming at the moment, uh, for example with AlphaStar and StarCraft 2. Uh, and it's essentially a, a way of teaching the, the computer how to play the game and get to the preferred goal without potentially going to a, a negative goal. So let's look at an example here of a maze that illustrates reinforcement learning. The, the red square is trying to get to the yellow circle without falling in the, in the black holes. If it, uh, if it falls in the black holes, it gets a negative reward, and if it goes to the yellow square, it gets a positive reward. And so after se several iterations and several games, uh, eventually it'll work, it, work out which is the best way to go uh, and how to get to that location safely. So in reinforcement learning, there are a few main components. Uh, for a start, there's the agent. This is essentially your bot. This is the, the computer algorithm that plays the game. There's the state, which is the game itself. So this is sort of the game board and the pieces on the board. There's the action, so these are the things it can do. There's the reward, which as we've talked about could be a negative reward or a positive reward. Uh, and then there's the, the step, which is essentially each uh, progression from one state to another. So as, as this red square moves around the board, each move that it makes is, is a step. In each step, the agent observes the state, takes an action and receives a reward. That's the main loop of reinforcement learning. So if we have a look at the state of this maze game, at the beginning state, when the red square is at the top left, this is kind of how the machine will, will see it. The one represents the red square, the twos represent the uh, black squares, and the three represents the yellow circles. So in the maze game, there are really only four actions. You can move up, down, left, or right. Uh, we don't really worry too much about the fact that in this beginning state you can't move left or up. It's, essentially these land the agent back in the same state and they get a zero reward typically. So it's not such a huge deal. They will, uh, the agent will tend to learn to move towards um, the bigger states and not try those uh, actions that land them in, in, in the same location again. In StarCraft 2, the actions, the possible actions are, there's thousands of them. Uh, you can train units, you can construct buildings, you can research upgrades, you can move, you can attack, you can cast spells. And some of these can get quite complicated. When you're moving or attacking, for example, you might move or attack on the screen or you might move or attack on the minimap and there, were, there are thousands and millions of possible coordinates that you could move or attack or do other actions on. So. The action space for StarCraft 2 is extremely broad uh, and that makes it a really complex problem to solve. In any state where the red square doesn't uh, get in a hole or get to the yellow circle, it's going to receive a reward of zero. If it falls in a hole, then it'll get a minus one and if it gets to the yellow circle, it'll get a plus one. In StarCraft 2, the rewards are kind of similar. Uh, if you win the game, you get a plus one and if you lose, you get a minus one. If you draw the game, then you get a zero. But those are just what we call sparse rewards. So, um, you know, the reward is only ever given at the end of the game, but this could be thousands and thousands and thousands of steps from the beginning of the game. Uh, so it's quite difficult for, for the agent to uh, sort of take these rewards and, and know what to do at the beginning of the game when the rewards are so far away. Because of this, there's this thing called dense rewards, which is what AlphaStar is currently using. So let's look at the, the process of this agent walking through the steps and taking actions and, and landing in different states. So we start at the top left and it moves to the right and it lands in the next square and it gets a zero reward because there's, there's nothing there. It moves right again and once again, there's zero reward. And then it chooses to go down. Uh, now it chooses these actions at random because it hasn't got any preference because you can see the, the value for moving up, down, left and right is zero. So it's going to choose one at random and in this case it randomly chooses to move down, it lands in the hole, it gets a minus one. But that's not it. What we actually do at that point is perform a calculation. So 
we take the expected reward and we look at the actual reward of minus one. We calculate the difference, which is obviously minus one. And then we have something called a learning rate. The, the learning rate is essentially a multiplier. So we multiply the difference um, by the learning rate and we get an actual reward of minus 0.1. Then what we do is we take our previous value of zero, expected value of zero. We take the new reward of minus 0.1 and we end up with a new uh, expected reward of minus 0.1. And we can see that here. In this state, it moves down, it gets a minus one. Therefore, moving down uh, has a reward of minus 0.1. So if the agent ever gets into this state again, it'll know that moving down was actually a bad thing to do. So let's take it back and let's say that it didn't go down, it actually went to the right. Now it moves to the right, there's zero reward, no harm done. Now it moves down, moves down again, and moves to the left and gets to the end goal, it gets a plus one. So we go through the same process again. We expected that we'll get zero because we haven't been here before. We take the actual reward of plus one, we calculate the difference, which is plus one, multiply it by the learning rate and then add it to our previously expected reward. And so we get a value of plus 0.1 for moving left in that state, as you can see here. So that's not it either, that's not everything. What actually happens is that reward will work its way back through to the beginning of the game. This can happen in different ways depending on the algorithm that's being used. Um, but essentially if, it, if the agent follows that path repeatedly, and it gets into to the previous states, the reward will start to work its way back up. And so we can step that through now. So we go from the, the winning state and to the step back, now we take a step back from there. So if we started in the state on the left where we're a couple of steps away from the, from the finish and we choose to move down, then we know that the next state has a value of 0.1 as the maximum reward. This is, you can see that on for, for moving left in that next state. So let's look at what we do with this calculation. We use uh, something called a reward decay to make sure that reward gets a little bit smaller the further away from, from that end state you get. So then the discount reward becomes 0 0.09. We calculate the difference between the zero and the 0 0.09, which is 0 0.09. Once again, we apply the learning rate of 0.1, so our final reward is 0.009. So let's talk about a concept known as exploration versus exploitation. So we talked about previously, uh, if all of the values are zero, if up, down, left, and right are all zero, then the agent will choose an action at random. What you have is this, uh, this value, which is kind of a, uh, you can sort of move the slider a little bit and choose how often your agent will choose a random action versus choosing the best action. So even if the, the agent knows that moving in a particular direction gets it a positive reward, you might want it to every now and then just choose a different action just to see what's there. And the reason why we do that is demonstrated here. You can see here in, on the example on the left, the, the red square goes down across and kind of goes into the corner and around to the to the yellow circle and this takes eight moves whereas on the right it goes around and goes straight to the yellow circle and this takes six moves so if the agent had only ever completed that that first loop around in those eight moves and had decided this is it this is the best way to go and and that's all that's it we're done that's all we need to learn then it might not have actually explored everything and come up with a scenario that actually gave it a better reward. Now, as we saw earlier, the reward has a higher value uh, the closer you are to it, to, to that final state. And that's, what, that's why we have this reward decay. So that's why we have that 0.9 multiplier. You can see here, moving down gives us a, a much smaller value than moving to the right. And then you might be wondering, well, why do we have this learning rate? Why do we multiply everything by 0.1 or whatever your learning rate might be? That's because if you take the full value, your agent might only learn one scenario that, that happens and it may not uh, take into account other scenarios that, that could happen. So in this maze game, nothing moves around, nothing changes, so it's fairly predictable. So the learning rate doesn't have a huge impact on, on what's going on. But let's take an example here where 
let's say you're in the in the square uh, the second square in and every now and then when you move to the right previously there was an empty square there every now and then that black square moves up say 20% of the time the black square moves up and you fall in a hole and in that case you might think oh well, maybe I should go down and across so the agent if it falls in that hole and you didn't have a learning rate and you just took the full value the agent would go well moving to the right is actually a bad thing to do but 80% of the time it's a good thing to do and so you end up with these problems where your agent will either learn always go that way and then it goes that way and then it learns a bad thing it never go that way again uh, and it might be the case that that particular direction to travel is the only way that, that you can go and and you're really choosing between the 80% path and the 20% path uh, and you'd be better off you know choosing the 80% path and so if you if you discount it and you have a slightly smaller value going back and that that learning rate applies it gives the agent an opportunity to go well I fell in that hole this time but maybe I won't fall in that hole next time and it tries it again and it learns okay I fall in that hole every now and then uh, so this you know, obviously in this game with the, with the maze, everything's very predictable. But in a game like StarCraft 2, you've got the fog of war. You've got an enemy that's doing things and researching things and building units that you can't see. So this kind of helps the agent to to say, well, you know, every now and then this thing happens or that thing happens, and and it won't just always assume that everything follows an exact path. And it gives it the ability to sort of factor in a range of scenarios rather than one specific scenario. So that's it for reinforcement learning. Uh, we'd like to know your bits of feedback on, on this video. And in the next video, we'll actually build an agent that uses this exact algorithm to play against an enemy similar to the way that AlphaStar plays against humans.